Lena Broca's 1976 film, Nsiang, opens with a pig dangling upside down in a slaughterhouse as it gets knifed to death by a man. We hear the pig squeal out in its last moments. The man goes from one pig to another, at first seemingly indifferent to the carnage that he is inflicting on these animals, but as he continues, he appears to enjoy it. This rather shocking opening scene has strong parallels to the Filipino struggle at the time, under the martial law regime commissioned by Ferdinand Marcos. A struggle I have previously touched on in my video for Evolution of a Filipino Family. In that film, we even get a stage interview with NCAA director Lena Broca, although played by an actor. This fictionalized Broca expresses deep concern with artistic censorship under this role, while making a political statement. I think in reality, Broca does something similar here with these pigs. At this time, many Filipino people felt like helpless animals, more or less awaiting their slaughter. I think also the sequence is telling on a more specific level, paralleling the patriarchal issues in Filipino society. The man killing these pigs here is named Dado. He is a butcher and he is a rapist. Much like the pigs awaiting their slaughter, so too are the women, more or less. He sees them in a restrained position, where he can lash out at them violently. Because as a man, socially speaking, he is in a position of control. The theme that pervades this film can be, for the most part, boiled down to a sociological concept referred to as rape culture. This idea was coined by American feminists in the 1970s in order to make sense of the society's normalization of sexual assault and harassment, as well as related problematic behavioral patterns. Now, some criticism towards this concept argues that rape culture is a rather narrow view of a much more larger issue relating to aggressive violence being a cultural norm. While others believe rape to be more of a problem on an individual basis rather than a social one, I believe rape culture is more true of a concept than not. Individual rapists should be to blame whether or not society plays a role in normalizing it. But that's not to say society doesn't play that role. And Siang could even serve as a cinematic poster child for these issues. The film surely highlights what can be seen as clear examples of rape culture in a society. In this case, it is the Philippines. So that's what we'll explore today. Rape culture in Nsiang. This is Justin with Style of Substance. The film takes place in Manila and follows the titular Nsiang, a young laundry woman who lives with her domineering mother, Tanya. Nsiang is told not to pursue relationships with men, despite her mother bringing her boyfriend, Dado, in to live with them. Tensions ultimately grow between the three. Additionally, the town as a whole judges their living situation. As the film progresses, we see the differences in which people of Manila treat men and women with respect to gender. Conformity to traditional gender standards, misogyny, and rape culture are ideas present throughout the film, and they all affect the minds of men and women alike. Towards the beginning of the film, a young man is dared by friends to grope a woman's breast. <laughs> He goes through with it and is ultimately yelled at and chased down the street by the woman's father. <laughs> Both the woman and her father are rightfully upset by the whole ordeal. Huh? 
and Siang is related to the perpetrator and rationalizes his actions. She states that because he was intoxicated, he is more or less innocent and should be immediately forgiven. <laughs> At this point to Insiang, it's like she could be thinking, how could this man do anything wrong and violate a woman's body? That surely couldn't be the case, right? She knows him, so he has to be innocent. If he is guilty about something, this something must not be a big deal. Well, to this woman, it is a big deal. She feels violated. Her protective father feels the same. But to the perpetrator, it's meant to be nothing more than good fun, a little dare, sneak up behind a woman and grab her breast. It's quick fun for the man, but a lasting feeling of physical violation and vulnerability for the woman. The fact that these men feel it is no big deal is even more indicative of rape culture, seeing that sexual assault is laughed off as a mere joke. Furthermore, Nsiang is so quick to rationalize the circumstance and lets the man get away with intoxicated sexual assault. Insiang probably doesn't even realize that she is ultimately favoring the actions of a sexual deviant over the physical comfort of her friend. And following the instance, they don't blame the man still, they blame the alcohol, as if the man is never to blame in these circumstances. <laughs> So we can see how rape culture goes both ways. Women can become so accustomed to a male-dominated society that they internalize forms of misogyny and rationalize the egregious actions of men. I'm not even saying that circumstances like these can never be forgiven. People can forgive who they want to forgive for whatever it is they do. However, circumstances like these definitely should not be so easily dismissed when it is clear that they do have an emotional effect on the victim. This has been a recurring issue for some time, and is still commonplace today. And Siang has a relationship with a man named Baybot, though she finds it difficult to be able to see him due to her mother's strict control. Her boyfriend sneaks into her house one night and plans to sleep with her. <laughs> But she rejects his advances. But this is not because she does not want to have sex with him but rather because she fears the consequences of being caught by her mother or by Dado. Tanya and Dado have a hold on Nsiang's sexuality and control of what she does. While it may be needlessly cruel for them to lock her up like this and take away her romantic and sexual freedom, this is ultimately the reality that many women face. This film only highlights this. Tanya finds out about this and physically harms her daughter, even though she was only trying to adhere to her mother's seemingly arbitrary ruling. But it's not just her mother also, as Dado takes control of her sexuality in many other ways. First she scares off her boyfriend, interfering with Nsiang's relationship. He also plays mind games. Stating this control is for her own security, which is simply not the case.
Hindi ako naniniwala sa'yo. Ayaw ko naman pahamak eh. Pinutulungan lang kita. Kung gusto mo akong tulungan, lumayas ka rito. Eh bakit ba galit na galit ka sa akin? Dapat pa nga magpasalamat ka eh. Dahil madalas, akong tumutulong sa'yo para tigilan ang inay mo, para di ka saktan. Kung talagang mahal ka ni Bebot, kahit ano pa sabihin ko sa kanya, ay hindi kanya bababayaan. And then he makes sexual advances on her. They get into an argument over it, and Dado chokes and knocks her out, and then rapes her in an unconscious state. It is in the second half that we really see the overt issues of rape culture unfold, mostly in an explicit manner. And Siang's mother finds her crying the next morning, clearly hurt and traumatized from sexual violence. <laughs> Naturally, she comforts her daughter and then confronts Dado, telling him to leave. <laughs> However, matters only worsen from here. Dado admits to having had sex with NC Yang but he shifts blame away from himself and then onto her, the victim. He claims that she tried to seduce him by laying around naked when her mother wasn't around. And because he cannot resist himself, and because he is a man, it must be Nsi Yang's fault, not his. What's really messed up about this is Tanya believes the words of Dado, a new boyfriend who just admitted to have cheated over the words of her own flesh and blood, who has openly expressed that she had been assaulted. But Tanya eats up Dado's words. She blames the assault on N.C. Yang. Whether or not it was consensual, it's almost incidental to Tanya. She believes that, either way, her daughter was asking for it. <laughs> Moving forward, Dada remains in their house with Nsiang's mother. <laughs> Nsiang is distraught about this whole affair and wants to escape. So she turns to her boyfriend, who agrees to elope with her. But after consummating the relationship, she wakes up to find him gone. In Siang finds out the hard way that some men are just after sex, not love. This seems to be what her mother was trying to protect her from, and what Dado claimed to be doing. But at the same time, not really. Sure, Nsiang may have been naive when it came to men, but people learn through experience. Being closeted from the outside romantic and sexual world won't help matters, but will only prolong that naivety, in many cases anyway. Furthermore, Tanya's and especially Dado's control of Nsiang's sexuality is not something that is well-intentioned. It's about power and control not looking out for her best interest. Otherwise, Tanya would have taken the rape allegation much more seriously, regardless of the lies that Dado told her. In Siyang's view, the world crumbles before her eyes. She was raped. Her mother turned against her. And the man that she put what little faith she had left in 
abandoned her sight. And Siyang has been manipulated through unfair gender dynamics and rape apologetics present in her society. And Siyang returns home and is thrust back into the same toxic lifestyle. Her mother still judges her. Dado still attempts to manipulate her. It is at this point that he plays mind games and at least attempts to convince her that despite everything he had put her through, he truly loves her and wants her. In Siyang seems to reciprocate and encourage his advances, as if she were falling for her aggressor. Dado and Nsiang enter a sexual relationship behind Tanya's back. However, this is not framed as romantic, but instead disturbing and ambivalent. See, Nsiang has nowhere else to turn, and her faith in men become contorted. She states that she wants vengeance. May gusto sana ako ipagawa sa iyo eh. Ano yun? Gusto kong kumanti. And she gets just that. Dado and his gang avenge Nsi Yang by beating up her ex-boyfriend. Nsi Yang continues her sexual activity with Dado. Her mother is driven crazy by this and is overcome by jealousy. Nsi Yang insists that Dado was having sex with her because he had been attracted to her this whole time. Tanya channels her anger and takes it out on Dado, stabbing him to death while Nsiang watches. As Dado is killed, there is a strong parallel to the opening shot, where the pig is slaughtered. He once controlled and abused these women, as if he slaughtered them like pigs, but now, essentially, Dado is the pig, and he is ready to be slaughtered. He behaves like an animal, and Tanya even confirms this verbally. That's what this all amounts to. People become pigs. Pigs get slaughtered. This is the way society functions, needlessly resorting to violence and dominance, all for the meat. It's a cruel world. Tanya is sentenced to prison, and Nsiang visits her. She tells her daughter that she does not regret murdering Dado, and did so to hurt Nsiang. <laughs> But Nsiang reveals that she had been disgusted by Dado and sought revenge. It turns out that she had actually planned to make her mother jealous and angry so that she would kill Dado. Essentially, Nsiang attempts to find liberation against this patriarchal system through revenge. However, she is asked by her mother if she is now happy. Nsiang says no. You see, if N.C. Yang can find some level of relative freedom by removing those that control her from the picture, she is ultimately still controlled and brought down, socially speaking, in this patriarchal society. <laughs> well, it is her mother that may be in prison, N.C. Yang basically is as well. So long as rape culture dominates society, women like N.C. Yang will never truly be free.